I ha I hate needles unless they're around seven continuously stabbing into me. Seven is a small amount. The average, let's get educated in here. You want more tattoo talk? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ugh. I don't know, Kay. I don't know. So, let me see. This line right here, see this, this black line? My chair is spinning. That black line, sorry, is probably, let's see, this one, right? This, see this thickness of this line right here? That's probably either nine needles or 11 needles, that one. So this thickness of this line right here is nine or 11 needles. This is probably about five, maybe? Um, do I have anything thicker than that? See these really thin ones? Those are probably a three. And then this stuff colored in right here. Those are probably seven, but when you have, <laughs> when you have a line needle, a line needle is a circle like this, but pretend it's a circle, but the needles are in a circle like that. If you have a shading needle, they're like this. So the lines are gonna be nine needles in a circle like this. The shading needles are going to be like nine needles, but in a, a stack like that. Or maybe more like... Like this is how it is. I know, it's very difficult. So, thank you, Darkstar. So, um... These like bigger areas where there's bigger colors in, where you can use a wider brush... I need to shave my arm. Um, the wider the area, of course, the more needles you can use. So this area, as large as it is, was probably a 13, maybe? They go up to... Depending on how big you're coloring. Let me see, um... I can go to a tattoo website, tattoo supplies. And I'll tell you. Those are called... The, the needles for lines are called rounds. And the needles for, um, shading are called, uh... What was it? Mags. Those are called mags. This one? I don't know if it will let me view the inventory. Okay, it will. Needle cartridges. Mm, tubes, tips, and grips. Okay, we need needle cartridges. No, that's not what I want. Mags. I'll do it, Hanson. Um, the different sorts of needle. Assumed it was just one super fast. They're the size of sewing needles, so just one. Some people will do single needle tattoos. Those are really difficult because they don't last too long because the ink is not getting packed in as hard as it would with multiple needles. Because the way that it works is, um, let me see if I can get a diagram. Uh, tattoo machine. Also, tattoo machines are called tattoo machines and not Guns. Most most tattoo artists don't like to say tattoo gun because it's not a gun. Let me see if I can get a close up. This is an um a rotary. This is a coil machine. Education. Let me see. I don't want it to like. Here's by the way where you live. Um. Tattoo... Sh shader. No. Getting tattooed by a dumpster. So do tattoo needles always generally have the same bore and just different amount of needles, or do they have... Uh, they're all the same, and you, they're just in different variations and in different stacks. So there's... There's a tattoo round, like a round, and... When it comes to those, you have either a loose, or a tight. So you have a tight five or a loose five. So a tight five is when the needles are like way closer together and that puts out a different line than a loose five does. And if you are knowledgeable about tattooing, you can make your own needles. So you can, if you have one that's tight, usually if you heat it, 
they'll open up a little bit. So the line will be thicker, but maybe not as solid. This will be smaller, but a little bit more solid. Voici. Um, and then the way that it works is I'll show you. Because it's really cool, this, the like... Okay, new image. Alright. Here's- I'm gonna teach you how to tattoo. Are you ready? I actually love how knowledgeable- It's cool, yeah. So, you have- um, this is your grip. Usually there's a tube on here. This is the tube. This piece right here comes out. The needle itself runs through the middle of it and hooks onto the armature bar, which is right here. It's powered by coils which once you give a positive um, charge, usually onto here, is what activates them. The ink goes in the tube, and I'll explain that one second. So you have a contact point right here, which is what vibrates the armature bar up and down that makes the needle go up and down really quickly. And this thing right here, the more you tighten it is how you control where it touches the contact point at. And when you build a machine, cause I built like, I had, one of my practices was that I had to build these. So I would get every single piece and have to put one together. And so maybe ET, maybe you will see science. So these are what power it. There's a contact between the armature bar, which vibrates it up and down with this contact point. If any of these pieces are not properly aligned, it won't work properly or it won't put out the right amount of power. And you have to put the right amount of power to it too, which you control with a machine um, that gives it like the power to it. It's hooked on here. This is called a grommet. I also called it a nipple because I thought it was hilarious. It's terrifying. It's pretty cool though. So like this hooks onto here, which puts the needle on here. And this is a small one. I'm pretty cool. Are these mostly the same for all tattoo places? Um, it varies. Some people, this is a coil machine because it has coils. Some have um, like a rotary, which means that instead of it vibrating up and down like this, it goes in a circle up and down like a sewing machine or like, I know I said the same thing to Tom. It goes in a circle kind of like a train wheel does. Does that make sense? So the needle is going in a circle downwards getting pushed instead of just up and down getting pushed. That would be a rotary versus a coil machine. And a lot of rotaries are automatic and quiet now. So the way that it works is you dip your needle into the ink and the ink doesn't actually go into the needle. It's taken into the tube kind of like by, um, is it like osmosis or something? <laughs> I sound cool, but really I know the technology of it, but I wouldn't want to tattoo again. Um, mitosis, something like that. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, so it pulls the ink up into this reservoir. That's why there's a hole right here. Um, and then the ink is held in here, and the needle pushing up and down sucks the ink down onto the skin, and the way that it's working is that the ink on top of the skin is getting pushed in by the needle. The needle's not injecting it. It's just pushing it down into the skin. So you're not being injected with ink. It's just pushing it. Yeah, I tattooed for over a year, which not a lot of people know that either is how like it actually works. So then your ink is stored in here and that's why you have to dip it often enough is because this well is where the ink is stored and has to get pushed down in there. It's really cool. And it's really interesting how it works because I think a lot of people are... Yeah, that's why they're messy. Because you have to wipe the ink away. Was tattooing bad for your back? Yes. My back would hurt like every single day. And also I had to wear reading glasses because I have... Um, bad vision and my doctor was like, you're staring very close to things. Did you just decide tattooing wasn't for you? It was very stressful. Um, and I'm like really hard on myself with a lot of things. And um, I wasn't enjoying, I just wasn't enjoying it. I would have anxiety like every single day. And I never did a bad tattoo. And I never did a tattoo that I wasn't like, 
Like, I never did a tattoo that I was upset or disappointed in, but I was really hard on myself that I wasn't learning as quickly as I wanted to, which in my personal outlook of myself was I was doing really well, but I'm just very critical of myself. And so I just was like, I don't know. And also it made drawing kind of no fun anymore because I was drawing every single day, all day. And I worked for someone and they were like, I need you to change this, 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 and this. What's this key? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, it was a lot of pressure, but it was cool. I loved learning about it. I loved drawing every day while I was enjoying it. But it is a lot of pressure and it's really difficult because you're putting something on somebody forever. And like, I did a lot of tattoos and I really liked them. Um, let me see if I can, I wonder if I can show one. Do I have one ready? Let me see. The Jedi building their lightsabers. Yes, part of my training was I had to put machines together and take them apart and put them back together which is not typical of everyone's training. I agree, Zimowo. Sometimes things don't work out and that's totally cool. It wasn't for me. Would I do it again? Maybe I would in a different environment. Um, let me see. I'll show you. Here's like one of the last ones that I did. No, that's not what I did. They just fucking do. Oh my god, it's doing something weird. Stop! No. Does this work? Sorry, this is about to be someone's belly. It is not my belly, okay? This is one that I did. This was like the last one that I did on somebody. What was your first tattoo? It was Final Fantasy X, but I got it covered up. Whose belly is it? A mystery belly. So, this was like one of the last ones that I did, and it took me oh, like two and a half hours or something. It's a, um, it's Buddha and a lotus. And then, I'll see if I have another one that I'll show you. Let me see. I have a bunny rabbit one that I did that I really like. A bunny. Thank you. I didn't know the belly owner. It was a very weird, um, arrangement. Is this one loading? Hello? It's angry with me. Hello? The Windows, like, image preview thing sucks. Case right, I went to work on the belly. I'm zooming in on this one. Here's another one. So I did this one too. Um... I only worked with black ink while I was training because it's like very difficult to learn with, so it just made it bad. You know, Clara, you know. Shading is really hard because it's about pressure and stuff. Um, there's like so many different things that go into to doing a tattoo, which is part of the reason why it was so anxiety making. I'll give you one more. Let me see, maybe that one? Or do I like this one better? Which one do I like better? Meow meow, maybe? Do you want a meow meow or a moth? We'll show you the meow meow. Is the birthmark where the ear is? I have no idea. So there's a, a spooky kitty. I'll show you the moth one too. A meow meow. Yes. This was like halfway through what I was doing. And let's see. And here's the moth. A moth. Still a little bloody, my bad. This was on the front of someone's shin. It turned out really cool. The redness is where there's gray, so it's light. The lighter the ink is, the more that the red of the skin shows through. So this ended up healing really soft in here. It was cool. Thank you, thank you. Front of shin is pretty, pretty painful, yeah. But it wasn't bad, that was on my friend. She says it's still one of her favorites. Do I have the B? Should I show you the B too? Oh, I didn't save the B. 
Should I have another bee that I did? You want more and more bee? One more bee! Here's a bee. This was another one. Where's the most painful spot to get tattooed in your experience? I hated getting my belly tattooed. It sucked. I don't know why. This was on someone's hip. And it's still a little bloody, and this- these were white highlights, but they're like orangish because of the irritation of the skin. Same with right here. This was like from darker to super light, so the red shines through more. Cool, huh? Is back supposed to be the worst? Everybody's body is different. Everybody's pain tolerance is different. So, um... There is, let's see. It depends. Usually people say the chest is really bad. Um, because of the bone, your sternum, ruby. So, but for me, I got, I have my sternum tattooed. But for me, it was, I could have fallen asleep. <laughs> I'm a bad bitch. I don't know if you know. Um, however, for the belly, my tattoo artist was like, I'm so glad to know that you're finally human. Because the other times she was like, have you taken drugs today? Because you're very calm. Um, the top of my foot and on my toes hurt very bad. In between the toes and onto the bottom of the foot hurt very bad. On the side of my knee, you know when you scrape your knee on the pavement outside? That's what it feels like getting your knee tattooed. But like for the whole time. Ruby? Love you. Love you too, Ruby. A lot of getting tattooed feels like having a really bad sunburn or getting a really bad like cat scratch because it's only the first layer of the skin. Um, tattoo needles. I'll show you the differences. Let's see. Oh, that's a good image. Edumacations. That way too, maybe if you're nervous about getting a tattoo, you'll be like, hey, that's not that bad. These are cool. Okay. All right, all right. Control plus. So let's see. Let me not make this too big. How tough is it to control the depth? You can um, control the depth by how far down you put your tube. So this needle is hung out pretty far, so you have to hold it farther back. It's about feeling and pressure and sound and knowing when you're going too deep, which is why it's really difficult. There's like, you have to be conscious of the pressure that you're putting, how much you're stretching the skin out, and the sound, because the sound, depending on where it is in the skin, the needle's going to sound different because of the pressure. So like, imagine if you have, imagine if you have something that's like tapping, right? And especially if you're tapping in something that's like malleable, the deeper that it goes, it's making a different noise because if it's just hitting the surface, it has less tension. The deeper that you're going is the more tension that there is, so it sounds different. Knuckles sound really crazy to tattoo. It sounds fucked up the whole time because it sounds like tattooing hollow bone. It's really weird. I tattooed someone's knuckles and I was like, uh, am I doing this right? Because it sounds really fucked up. So the tension makes different noises. And when it goes deeper. If you go too deep is when you cause a blowout like I talked about before. And it will, sometimes it can snag the skin a little bit, but it doesn't hurt any differently. Um, sometimes if someone's inexperienced and they go too deeply, then it can hurt more, but it's only usually for a second that that happens. Unless, like I said, when they're doing the hand and they have to go deep on purpose. It's really cool, Kay. It's cool. Um, you can also tell, like, the tension and stuff like that. So you have, like, these are the rounds that I was talking about before. So this is a three round, sh uh, a three round needle. A four round, people don't use that too often. Usually they use like a three, a five, a seven, um, what is this, an eight? Those are the different arrangements of how the needles are. I used to, squeak easy. I did for like over a year. 
Like even hearing the difference between fatty and bony areas. Yes. And when you're getting tattooed too, it sounds different. A fur ball. You can always get one, but it is recommended that you shave because they do look different from when you shave than when you don't. So these are the ones that make the lines. So this is a smaller line into a bigger line, which is pretty cool. These are the shaders. So this is a seven. So it's gonna have seven needles stacked. This is a five, this is a nine, an 11, 13, 15, blah, blah, blah. And these are what makes the shading. It's more like a flat paintbrush than like this, which makes a circular line as you drag it. Like this, see? And then um, you can loosen them up by making these separate a little bit more. It looks scarier than it is. Then you have the tube that they go into with the reservoir. And there's like different kinds. This is what the shader goes into. So it lays flat, which is these ones. And these are what the liners go into. I liked the diamond tips when I was tattooing. The rounds are okay. It's just personal preference. Nope, not hollow at all. They're more like a sewing needle. So like, um, let me see if I can find like a, like a head on image or something. This one kind of shows you. This is a pretty good image. So this shows you the round one with the needles together. They're soldered onto a, like a one main thing. Same with this. This is a loose versus a tight. So the line that it puts out is different. And then the magnum, how it stacks, is for shading. Just cool. Sewing your, sewing your skin. It only goes into the first layer of skin, so it only needs to push the ink down. It doesn't need to inject it. Anyways. It's pretty cool, huh? It was a really cool thing to learn. And building the machines was really cool. Having all the knowledge is cool. If I wanted to ever tattoo again, I could. I have a portfolio still. I just would want to go about it differently, I think, and to be less hard on myself. But I'd rather stream for a living. I like it better. I'm sorry, Phil. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. On your shoulder, it can hurt. It's true. It's cool to learn about, but I hope that like... Because people are always really intimidated by getting a tattoo because they think that it's like big and scary. Like the difference between... Difference between... Uh... Medical needle... And... Tattoo needle. When's my next TED talk? I don't have much more knowledge than this. Tattoo boys can't have you, Twitch has laid claim. Exactly. Tattoo Leo, tattoo stream goal. Jack without the C, thanks for following. A tattoo for sentimental reasons. True. I do it, Ruby. I don't have any machines though, they're very expensive. I guess, so if you think about the gauges of a, a surgical needle, those are way different than how a tattoo needle works, because a tattoo needle is never a different size, it's just a different amount of needles. Better work, Twitch. Thanks for following. Greco-Roman shit, I know. What are you trying to get, Emma? Can you tattoo people courage on me? Only if I do it, too. You would do it split? I would do it. Who needs machines? Stick and poke? Oh my gosh, those are so difficult though. A tattoo stand at Yogcon. An anime back finished. Try it. Go for it. Live your life. Shiny rigigigigigigi. You know, I don't know anything about shinies, Emma. I've never had any. I got the, what is it, Minuchino or whatever its name is? I have no idea. I've seen so many folks with no experience doing stick and pokes, I'm sure you'd be great. I don't- those are difficult too, cause they're- It's only one needle. Unless you solder it, which- That doesn't always go well. That does not go well. Making your own. 
a sh Boba's a shiny Clara! Pretty much everyone you know has at least one stick and poke. See, I never did that. I get a better deal, Ruby. They're not- they're- you want to practice hygiene, though. Because a big part of tattooing was learning hygiene. And, like, you get checked by the health department once a year. All kinds of stuff. So you have to really know. No problem, Jack. What style of tattoo did you do? Whatever people asked for. Mostly American traditional. Which I'll show you guys. Because it was really fun. American traditional tattoo. Or like those soft ones, or just whatever people brought in on a piece of paper, really. So like, um... Black and gray. And usually, when you get a tattoo, if you're only getting black and gray, usually people call it black and white, we call it black and gray. So I did a style like this, but not anything this big. Yeah, American traditional. <laughs> so it's bold lines, bold shading, American traditional. Pretty cool. Or they have, um, it's a lot of like nautical, roses, uh, like banner things, hearts, the mom hearts. These are pretty cool where they've got the um, stars filling in. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Purple, have a good nap. Boats? Boats. Lots of boats. Let's see. I fucking love bathtubs. Interesting. Should we play a game? Did we do enough just chatting for the beginning of the stream? Let's ask Clara. Clara? How did I do? Did I do okay? Games. I have a color arm and a black and gray arm. Very cool. Very cool. Not even one hour yet? Okay. What else can we talk about? I need to buy clothes, guys. I really do. I don't know what I want, though. I need to get some black jeans. So I'm wearing his leggings because they're the only things that fit right now because everything else is too big. Great work. Did you check out that shop from yesterday? No, repost those bras for me. How many tattoos do you have? <clears throat> I have, what'd we say last time? 36 hours worth of tattooing? They're pinned? I don't have Discord open. I don't open it while I stream. My good mood just got a little better. There's a job opening in Lego store nearby for your wife. Amazing. Let's cross our fingers for her smashing. Thank you. EPL store. Oh my gosh. Well, these are cool as fuck, Kay. Where's the strap one? Oh, that one's very cool. Nude sparkle, how much is it? $75! I'm still gonna bookmark it. $75! Very cool. Were you or were you not too old for Pokemon back in the day? Me? I was the fucking Pokemon champ. What do you mean too old? Do you have more tattoos than you do not tattoos? No. I have my arm done. I have my inner arm done. I have my side to my thigh done. I need to get my back done done. I have one on the side of my knee. I have one on the top of my foot. I have the one on my chest. And that's it. Would it be crazy to have a big back tattoo as a first tattoo? Bitch, go for it. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. I was... You were too old, Hanson. I was uh, in fourth grade when Pokemon came out, I think. And I was the coolest kid in the neighborhood. Timber Tom? You can. You know, do it. Get the big one. Get the big one. Go for it. And if you're like, man, this shit sucks, just tell them, hey, I need a break. If you take ibuprofen, take some ibuprofen about 30 minutes before your appointment, or when you get to your appointment, because they're going to still be setting up and everything. 
if you take ibuprofen, that can help a little bit. Ask your tattoo artist first what they think. Um, yeah, me standing on my head in the garden. I was. I was the one that would beat everyone else's Pokemon game for them. Even all the boys. Um, yeah, you can always start and then expand. Jimmy Space, thanks for following. What did- there was someone that asked something. Uh, thoughts on face tattoos. Um, I think the only people that should get face tattoos and, like, hand tattoos and neck tattoos are people that are in, like, art industries or people that, like, I don't know. I think, well, I think everybody should be able to get up to their neck tattooed, but I don't think everyone should get their face tattooed. I think... It's a little too much, in my own personal opinion. When I was tattooing, I was down to get my face tattooed. I was gonna get, which maybe I still will, depending on what I do in my life. If I fucking can professional stream, if I can be a streamer full time, I'm gonna get like completely tattooed. But when I was tattooing, I was like, definitely gonna get like, I like the ones on the side right here. And I like the ones on the edge of the forehead. Please don't. I'm not going to get my face tattooed, but I will get tattooed, like, definitely on my neck and stuff, at least. Clara, do you have enough room back there? I would like to. I'm going to get a lot. The face edge ones you're talking about? Let's see. Face tattoo. It's going to bring up, like, the worst kinds when I Google this. It's going to be like, check out this idiot. Um, let's see. Who's got a good example? I don't like the under the eyes ones. I like, um, there's always Kat Von D's is kind of cool. This is not too bad. Usually the ones that I'm talking about on the edges. Let's see if I can find somebody who has a cool one. Fucking Justin Bieber. Um, definitely not a shoe on the side of your face. Not that. Let me see if I can find one. Matching tattoos with Leo. Want to tally of how many tattoos you have, Emma? You gotta look. A sideburn, yeah. Goodness. Tilleron? Yeah. A small one on the side. Um, let me see. Cool. Cool ones. If you type in cool, it gives you cool ones. This one's kind of cool. That's me still. Like on the edge right there. I don't care for this one. On the edge right there though. Like this? That's kind of cool. Don't care for all that though. Face tattoos heal differently as well. Post Malone's were not done very well. I think they didn't- they healed out kind of. The sword is kind of cool though. Rick Gen Genist? What's that? Something that follows- yeah, when you tattoo, or when you get a tattoo design, the best thing to do is to follow the natural curve of the body as well. That's pretty cool. Who's my favorite? Oh, I'm gonna show you my favorite dude. This dude can get it. This guy has some of my favorite tattoos. This guy can fucking get it. How do I zoom out? Tattoo model man. Oh. Tofin, hello? Not allowed face tattoos in my job, but a lot of us have tattoos behind the ear. Yeah, there's that too. Look at this guy. That's Invader Zim also, which I think is pretty funny. But my favorite, I don't know why, but I'm enamored with the Et Tu Brute one. I don't know why. I fucking love that one. Also, he's just very hot. He's just hot. Psychotic. See ya. Oh, this guy. Didn't he pass away? He's pretty cool, yeah. It works well for him. I don't know about anybody else, though. Yeah. A cute little face. Are there any of those in color or just all black? I'm sure there's some color ones. 
I wonder if I can find one on Instagram, because I follow a lot of tattoo pages still. Instagram. Slash. Let me see. Um, Neotrad Europe. Neotrad. Additional Europe. Let's see. Oh, here's a pretty cool one I saw the other day. Do I have anything on my screen? Okay. Look at this one. So you've got the curve of the face naturally, right? This and more curve to the face. I don't know if, how I like this, but this part is cool. Definitely different. Then there, what else was there? Do they have any? Let's see. That one's pretty cool. I like that one a lot. There's a butt. Just scroll past the butt. This one's pretty cool though. Like look at that, when he moves and stuff? That's cool as fuck. See how it follows the jawline like that? And then once your hair grows back a little bit, of course. But that's cool as fuck. Relax. What happens when your hair grows out? Um, it will still be the same. It will just be a little bit more covered up. How many appointments did it take between concept to actual tattoo beginning on average? Um, it depends on how picky you are. So for me, uh, when I give an artist an idea, I want them to do what they want to do because they're trained and they're knowledgeable and that's their job. So like, you go to a tattoo consultation and you say, I'm interested in getting this. And then like for the guy that I went to most recently, I went and I talked to him about what I liked. He took measurements and traced the area of what he wanted to do and took pictures, and also I took lots of pictures, and this was already after I had sent him an email of my idea and all of my images that I had for reference. A lot of tattoo artists work in, in emails, but also you can walk in and find someone that you like and talk to them. I'd rather have one that's planned out rather than something that I just take there and say that I want this. Those are still cool, that's just not for me. So, I sent him an email with all of my reference images, um, where it was going, pictures of the spot that it was going in, along with the other tattoos that were in the area so he knew how to work around them. And then when I went in the next time, he took a look at everything, asked me what I liked about the images that I sent and what I was looking for, and then the next time that I went in was time for the appointment where he was like, here's the drawing, is there anything you want me to change before we start? And I was like, no bitch, it's perfect. So, depends. That one's pretty cool. This hand tattoos, the farther down they go, sometimes they don't stay as well. This area will probably fade out. Maybe this area and probably this area because that's where your skin regenerates regenerates the most. Sorry, titties. But um, everybody's different. Look at this bird. Cute, huh? Everyone's listening. Do you like portrait tattoos? I do, but they have to be done well. Um... Portraits are difficult. I wouldn't personally get a portrait. It's not for me. Um, unless it was like what I have, which is not a portrait of an actual person. This style of all of these is called neo-traditional, which is, it has like bold shading and bold lines like American traditional does, but it's neo because it's new, a new style. They sure did, Torb. The ramen bowl. Yeah, I sent that the other day to Leo. Where was it? Jeez. Oh, this one? That one is cute. There was another one that was like a jellyfish that was really recent, but I don't know if it's on this page or not. It might not be. This raccoon's cool as fuck, though. Look how thick those lines are and look how solid that color is. Really, really cool. When it heals, of course, it'll be muted because it's still fresh, but... Um, like, this is really cool. This is one of my favorite artists. A parrot arm tattoo near the top. Why isn't there a parrot? Who knows? David Corden. Interesting. Neo-traditional. What aftercare would you recommend? I would always say go with what your artist recommends. When I get tattooed personally, um, I do less is more. So uh, for me... Ooh, these are cool. So for me, when I get a tattoo, the way that I found that my skin heals the best 
is if I mostly leave it alone and then when it gets dry, I put um, coconut, like shea butter lotion on it. So that's what I do personally. I found that the more stuff that I put on myself, my skin suffocates more and more scabbing occurs and it doesn't heal as well. Um, but the less stuff that I put on, the drier it stays and the less that it scabs for me. But everybody's skin heals differently. Everybody's skin has different hydration. So you want to make sure that you're following what is normally recommended from your artist. And then as you go, you can see how your body heals, but always consult with them first because depending on how you're healing it, you can um, mess it up. So I have tattoos where I learned when I was putting too much stuff on is that some of the color pulled out of it. Um, so there were spots that need to be touched up and that happens anyways. And that's why a lot of tattoos get gone over more than once. Check this shit out. That's cool as fuck. Look at how it hugs the ear. Follows a nice curve, really super bold lines. That will heal really well as well. Very cool. Some people put some kind of plastic film over the tattoo. Usually when I leave um, my tattoo artist, they put the saran wrap on. That helps protect your arm against like dust, dirt, um, hitting it on anything and reminding you that you have a fresh tattoo. Kind of like wearing a mask reminds you not to touch your face. So having the saran wrap on usually is recommended to leave it on like for the day, overnight, whatever. Um, me personally, I do it different as well because I've found how I heal best too. Locks in the freshness. Um, it'll also be bleeding but blood and plasma the rest of the night. So that's part of the reason why they put the saran wrap on it is because when you get into bed at night, you're most likely going to get it on your sheets and on your shirts and stuff. Only lost a little ink from the first one, none from the second. Yep, you gotta find what works for you too. It's like, I have one on my chest. Um, I fucked it up because I got drunk and I slid on the carpet. <laughs> so I pulled some of a scab off. Um, and don't do that. And I have one on my hip that I moisturized too much and my jeans like rubbed some of the scabbing off too. Mm. Bleeding was the worst part, almost fainted when I took the black wrap off. A lot of times it's more than it looks like too. Um, yeah, that was a facepalm moment. Um, my back bled a lot. Um, and it depends on how your diet and everything has been, but also just how your how your body is naturally. Like, if you're anemic, all that sort of thing. Um, it really depends. But it's cool. Your knee bled a ton. Yeah, each spot can bleed differently, too. Okay. Everyone's different. Now I can't donate blood anymore. I weigh too much. No, opposite. I don't weigh enough. Want to get a bunch of small stuff on one arm, maybe sleep on the other. That's pretty cool. Do what you want to do. I liked this one a lot too. Oh, this guy's pretty cool. Uh, Paul Terry. He does these flowers. Those are pretty nice. Um, who do I really like? If you checked, did you see both of them? I did. The second one is me, Kay. Is it not? Let's be honest here. Actually, I think mine looks better. Yeah, mine looks better. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Only the second one. Kay? If I'm gonna get a tattoo, I think I just want to get a little smiley face on my ankle, really small and hidden. Whatever you want to get. Kay, what the hell? poetry the bart raven what bart raven oh yeah simpsons is a pretty popular um tattoo thing recently are you looking at the very expensive bras yeah they're pretty cute garden fairies can't give blood too much magic in your system why are they so expensive treat your bobs right oh check this bitch out look at how fucking cool this is some of this may heal out but it looks sick as fuck, does it not? Look at that. 
So fucking cool. Look at this one. <laughs> God, that tattoo's done really well, but I would not want that. A small sneaker. Oh, that's pretty cool. Then when your hair grows back, you may only have tentacles, and then it depends on what you want. Treat your bobs, exactly. Gonna gift myself a tattoo after I finish more of my weight loss transformation. Guess what? If you're waiting to lose weight to get a tattoo, fuck that. Get it now. That's what I say. I do not want an Ice Age baby tattoo. I'd rather perish. This is very cool. There's a raccoon. Very cute. This is very, um... Uh, characteristic of neo-traditional is outlining where the shapes and colors are which is not normally how something looks like this rooster very fucking cool remind me to highlight this stream since it has like I don't know I feel cool <laughs> the education oh look at this knee look at how that wraps around the knee how fucking beautiful is that neo-traditional is my favorite let you big pictures more. You know, I'm not sure. Just this one. Yeah, only this one. Um, in the UK, I found some smashy. If you follow um, the neo-traditional Europe, I really recommend them. And then you go to each like person and see where they're from. This one's got a butt. Look at this one. There you go. There's a um. What's that guy's name? Let me see if I can find him. Oh, I know what his name is. Brando Chiesa. I have no idea how to say that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Some of this might be naughty, but here you go, Kay. This guy's Italian, I think. New traditional Spain. Yes, also very good. So this guy's really cool. He does a lot of like um, video game stuff. He has done some very naughty boy things, though. Here's Totoro. You like it? Brando Chiesa is his name. I don't know how to say it. It's Chobits. Chobits. Very cool. This is just like a wolf thing. Um, oh, here's a Digimon. That one's cool as fuck, too. Very cool. Isn't it? This guy's cool as fuck. He, his tattoos get stolen a lot. Here's one thing that I will say to you. Never take an image like this of a tattoo artist that's done something custom for someone. Um, never take an image of someone else's tattoo that's not something like live, laugh, love or something and ask for it exactly. Don't take this to an artist and be like, I want this exact thing. Because this artist has spent time on this, and they've the person who's bought it has spent money on a tattoo just for them. So that's a dick move. Don't do that. People do that a lot, and there's tattoo pages for it that call it out, because someone's paying for a custom piece of work, and stealing it is really shitty. So don't do that. If you like a tattoo, if you like a tattoo, take this and say, I really like this. I want something similar for myself and let them do it. Don't get something that someone else has. It is art theft and it's shitty. Like if someone has something that they personally asked for, why would you want to take it? That's my opinion. Look at this Kingdom Hearts one. Pretty fucking cool. Similar, but still unique. Exactly. What if you ask the person if they can have it too? You can do that. Um, most of the time, it's going to be no. Because people are paying an artist for their time to make this. And the amount of time that goes into the drawing and into the application is a long time. So... If you want something like this, go to the artist that made it. What about taking an image like this? Yes, that's perfect. You can take this and say, I want this, and then the artist will make it. But like, if it's an existing tattoo already that somebody has, I think that's really shitty to do. Um, but if you, yeah, his background imaging is always really good. If there's something that you 
want that somebody else has or you really like how an artist draws, the best thing to do is to go to that artist first, if it's possible. If it's not possible, then don't ask to get something the exact same when it's something like a custom artwork like this. Oh my gosh, Fuffle has it too. Amazing. Yeah, the background imaging of this guy is cool. But you don't want to take something because like... Imagine if you got a tattoo and you went to your artist and they drew something up really cool for you, right? Um... Then, imagine if you fucking see somebody get the same thing, and you're like, man, like, I would feel kind of shitty about that if someone, like, got the exact stuff that I have, because, like, it's special to me and, you know, unique. If someone took a drawing of what I did whatever online and let an artist tattoo that, what do you think of that? That's difficult because, unfortunately, digital artists get treated really shitty. Um... My personal opinion is if you find a drawing on the internet, if you can find the person who made it and ask them if it's okay to get it, do that. If you can't, then I would suggest telling the artist that you want something similar but not the same. Because you don't want to steal from people. It's different getting a custom tattoo and getting something you know that's an art that's already out there. Exactly. It's like... In the interest in in the industry Pinterest tattoos it's weird and it's a fine line so like there's a lot of things that people get that are on Pinterest that um, people are just gonna get so let's say a flower butterfly tattoo all right there are a million variations of this tattoo that originally stemmed from something else. This. I did one of these even. But what I did was someone said, I want this image. So I took the idea, but I made it and I just redrew it so that it was completely like custom still. So like, even though someone was like, I want this image and I want a butterfly with half flowers. Um. I still did it different. This person's really cool. The only thing that I feel personally about tattoos that don't have distinguished lines around them, they can heal differently and I always like... Um, one thing that I like is if you see an artist who does a tattoo, you want to see if they ever post healed pictures because sometimes, like this one, Maybe the saturation or something can be turned up too. So you have to look at how like you have to look at how it's photographed too. There's a butt. And you always want to see if they have healed tattoo work on their page as well. Because you want to see what their application process looks like after it's healed versus when it's fresh too. Um so I can show you that as well. Let's see. Tattoo fresh healed Instagram. Fresh versus healed Instagram. Um, fresh healed, is this the one? No, these are shitty ones. I want the cool ones. Fresh and healed. This is a shitty one. They only have 33 posts. Um, let's see. So a lot of artists will post their fresh versus healed, right? The Discord, yes, that too. All right, so fresh healed. A little bit different, but not bad. Fresh healed. You can see that it's darker, everything looks a bit more saturated. When it's healed, it mellows down. Um, fresh versus healed. Still bad as fuck, but it's not going to stay that way. So they have the client come back for the healed photo. Um, usually, if an artist has, it depends. So like, 
I have been to my artist a few times, so he has opportunity to take pictures of when it's healed. Um, oh, you have to, uh, Kafuffle, you have to read the rules. And then there's like a thing that you have to like acknowledge in the rules in order to join. Um, have you seen the pigments that are only seen under UV? Heard from some people they are farce and others they are awesome. Um, from what I've seen, they do work. My only qualm with them is I don't want something in like put into my skin that is reactive to light, personally. That just sounds like weird to me. So for me, I don't much care for that because eh, there's vegan. Um, a lot of tattoo ink is vegan. Um, when it comes to that sort of thing and the way that it reacts to light, I personally don't trust it myself, so I wouldn't get a tattoo like that. Here's a cool fresh versus healed. It's very blurry though. Qualm. My qualm. A lot of them a lot of them are vegan, but some are not. Let's see if there's anything else. See, okay, here's what I was talking about with the gray. So when you have um, black, right? And then you have gray, which is mixed black with water usually. And you have different levels of that. So you have different levels of, it's called gray wash. Yeah, Tilleron, I didn't realize for a long too. So like, um, the darker it is, the more black it has versus water. The lighter it is, the less black it has to water. The parts are mixed differently. So like this, you can see that it's got black, it's got white highlights in it. The red area is where the color is lighter, so the irritation of the skin is coming through more. And then you can see when it's healed that like the white highlights in the feet are still kind of visible, but they're not as vi uh, vibrant because the skin is not like pigmented in this photo. And the area where it was irritated before has calmed down, so you can really see how the gray is actually like coming out. Today I learned Neuron. Yes. May I ask why you don't trust it? Is it due to the process of acquiring them or their effect? I don't like the idea of the weird chemical, I guess, is my own thing. Pretty smooth? Let me see. Oh. Let me see. Also, look at the butt tattoos so you'll be more motivated. What a long cat that is. What a long cat you have there. Welcome, if you'd like to join the Discord. It's very cool, and everyone there has a lot of fun. That's a very cool tattoo. Let me see. Where's Cop at? Anyways, now we've surpassed our hour of chatting. See you, Tilleron. I was thinking of getting a tattoo on my hand, but I don't want it visible at most times, doing not to be allowed for pilots. Eh. Then I would say just get it tattooed somewhere else, if you can't get it on your hand. Yeah. There's white ink. White ink is weird. Because it can be- oh my god, don't make me click for- it just takes whatever pigmentation that the skin has and just kind of lightens it. It's not really naturally white. Oh, I didn't even show you. <laughs> Again. It takes the pigment rather than, um, like, actually being white. So it's like if you have, like, um, construction paper. Like, you know how if you have, like, red construction paper, green construction paper, blue construction paper... If you draw white on it, it's just gonna be a lighter version of that color. I'll read Mara. Thanks for following. All right, let's see. Speaking for Clara. Looks like scarring. Yeah, it can look like that a bit too. Let's play a game, shall we? Let's play a game. Everyone stuck around. What did you think of my tattoo talk? Rate me. Rate my tattoo talk and tell me if it was interesting or if I was blathering on. Games. Goodness. 100 out of 10. Thank you. 10 out of 10. Informative. Isaac? It was a cool time period of my life. 
69 out of 69. Thank you, Hanson. 10 out of 10. Get a tattoo. That's what I would say. Perfect. You're welcome. <laughs>